So, I caught up on One Piece. What's up everyone? Mike from Mike's Manga on here, back again. And today's a very special day because I finally caught up on One Piece and now we can just spend a whole lot of time talking about it. I've been waiting for this day for a really long time. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I figured I'd kind of start with my history with One Piece. I read it back in middle school, maybe like 15 years ago. Uh, my brother and I was actually a really big fan, and we owned the first 13 volumes, uh, the gold foil ones, which I really wish we never got rid of. I sold those for $50. <laughs> uh, I also used to watch the show, well, the four kids dub it, so if you even count that as watching the show. And like every month when I got my new Shonen Jump magazine, I kind of skimmed through the chapters, but I only ever got up to Alabasta, never even really finished that arc altogether. So my knowledge was very slim, and you know, I also was a pretty good player at a One Piece Grand Battle on the PS2. You know, just just saying. Flash forward like years later when I'm kind of rediscovering my love for manga. I had the first two volumes. I picked them up at a thrift store a very long time ago. And I was so excited just to put them on my collection. And I'm like, oh, I'm content with the first two volumes of One Piece. But a few friends at work were really, really into One Piece. And they kept telling me, you got to read it. You got to read it. You got to read it. And, you know, a thousand chapters gets really intimidating at first. So I was at Barnes & Noble one day and I saw the uh, 4, 5, 6 omnibus. And I already had volumes 1 and 2. And I was like, huh. Maybe I'll just read what I already read with uh, East Blue. So I bought it. I remember I showed my friends and they flipped out that I was going to start reading One Piece. And I honestly, just like reading the first six volumes, I got pretty hooked. So my, let me just read all of East Blue led to, well, let me just read all of Till Baroque Works. And so I got all the omnibuses leading up to Baroque Works, to so the end of Baroque Works. And then after that, I was kind of like, well, where, where does it go from here? Because Alabas is a really good arc. And I just kind of wanted to see like, how it continued and i've heard so many good things about the future of one piece so luckily i got lucky scored the second one piece box set which went all the way up to uh ennis lobby read that whole thing uh, i found the like the third box that was out of stock when i was collecting one piece and reading it like in my prime so i kind of found all of the individual volumes it cost me a lot more than it should have but uh, i read all of them individually and then i just kind of waited until the fourth box set came out and then once that finally came out i read through that and then just bought the last couple volumes and at that point I was on chapter like 994 and I, I was content with waiting until like the volumes just came out like in print but my friend showed me that they're actually all available to read on the Shonen Jump app right now and it's like caught up to like modern times and I wasn't gonna read it like that at first but I was so nervous about like spoilers because like when the end of this show or when the end of this manga comes out like spoilers are gonna be everywhere and I'm not gonna avoid those for just like years because like we're behind years in the uh, printing of uh, manga so I read all of those and I caught up. As of today, I am on chapter 1044, patiently, not patiently waiting for chapter 1045. So what are my thoughts about One Piece? Well, I have a lot, so let's talk about it. I think what draws me in most about One Piece is always the characters. Each member of the Straw Hat crew has their own very unique personality with a fully fleshed, mostly tragic backstory. And I like how they all have individual dreams. Luffy wants to be King of the Pirates, Zoro the Greatest Swordsman, Nami wants to make the world map, Sanji in the All Blue, Brooks in Laboon, so on, so on, and so on. And I like how they can all kind of put aside their own differences and their conflicting personalities to come together as a crew to help each other achieve those dreams. That always really struck something in me. But in terms of favorite characters, mine definitely had to be Sanji and Robin. As a kid, I was always drawn to Sanji for his really cool kicking moves, but growing up and reading it again as an adult, I began to have more of a different perspective on him. Sanji has a lot of really, really cool moments. Probably some of my favorite in the show, from saving the crew at Alabasta, all the way up to one of my favorite scenes in the entire series, uh, the train ride to Ennis Lobby when he just fights CP9 by himself. I was just so hyped for that, I didn't want to put it down. And then to my surprise, my favorite character goes through a whole other character development arc, like 800 chapters in, where we kind of learn about his Vince Smoke roots and uh, his tragic backstory that leads into his already tragic backstory. Just Sanji gets me so hyped. His fights are always really, really good. From Bon Clay all the way in Alabasta, all the way up to recently where he's fighting Queen and Wano. Just every time I see Sanji get ready to fight, I'm ready to just full attention to read and I don't want to put it down for hours. He will always be my favorite character. As for Robin, I know most people take a look at her figure and are just like, oh, that's why you like her. But I feel like she's definitely a lot more than that. I fell in love with Robin really hard around Ennis Lobby and her willingness to sacrifice herself for a crew she's only known for one arc prior really, really struck with me. 
And then you throw her backstory on it and on top of that all, and I was just losing it. She might have my favorite backstory out of all of the Straw Hats, definitely. Maybe the entire series, actually. And don't worry, we're gonna talk about I Wanna Live. Robin's also like the most important character in the entire show slash manga because she's the only one who can read the Pong glyphs. So anyone even, if anyone even wants to get to Laugh Tale to find the One Piece, they're gonna need her. And it's really good that she's on the Straw Hats crew for that sake. And I kind of like how she's still finding ways to surprise us. She, she literally transformed into a demon in her last fight in Wano. And I just can't wait to see how much more her character develops going forward. All right, I figured I'd wrap up this character section just kind of quickly rapid firing some of my favorite char minor characters from the show. Uh, quickly becoming a big fan of Marco. I really hope he sticks around more towards the end. Uh, Duke Darkstrom, definitely one of my favorite minx, if not one of my favorite non-straw hats in the entire series. I think he's really cool. Uh, in terms of like greatest generation or worst generation pirates, uh, my favorite definitely probably is Law, but that's kind of obvious. I'm also a really big fan of Killer, especially after his latest fights in Wano. I thought he was really, really cool. Kind of gave his character more depth. Really like that about him. Uh, I go back and forth if I like Hawkins or not. Like sometimes I think he's really cool and sometimes I'm just kind of like, eh, like, yeah, he's there or whatever. Uh, in terms of like super, super minor characters, Pauly and Water 7 and Dalton and Drum Island are probably two of my favorites. Also big fan of Vivi. Really wish she stuck around for a lot longer, but every time I see her kind of pop back up, I get a little excited. She's really, really cool character. I really like her. Uh, after Impel Down, Bon Clay definitely became one of my favorite characters. His friendship bond with Luffy is just so, so good. Uh, really strikes something in me. I really, really like that one. And out of like all the Marines, my favorite is always uh, Tashigi. She's my favorite. Uh, probably one of my favorite characters in the entire show. I just really, really like her and her kind of like back and forth with Zoro. Uh, but in terms of villains, my number one favorite villain, definitely Crocodile. Um, just growing up, I really liked him. I think that's kind of also what happens. But he's kind of the most, like, villain villain out of all the villains. Like, he's just really, really dastardly. And I guess my biggest hot take for, like, in terms of, like, One Piece characters is, like, Doflamingo. Um, yeah, he's cool. Like, he's all right. I don't really see the big, big hype about him. Like, their fight was really cool. But, like, his character itself, I was just kind of like, ah, he's just another villain. Like, yeah, he's kind of, like, sick and dastardly. But Crocodile is just, I think, is just so much better than Doflamingo as a villain. All right, let's talk about the arcs. I have to say out of the entire series, my favorite arcs are definitely Alabasta, of course, uh, Water 7, Sabote, uh, of course, Marine Ford, Punk Hazard, and my very, very favorite has to be a very basic Enislavi. Although the final act of one was making a very strong case for itself lately, especially with the most recent chapters. Alabasta was definitely the first arc I really fell in love with. I just love the whole intensity towards the end with that whole bomb scenario going on. Uh, Luffy versus Crocodile, definitely my first like really big like favorite fight. Probably still one of my favorite fights in the entire series. And the the whole ending thing where the the gangs departing and they all hold up their arms with the X on the thing with Vivi, it just it, that got me so emotional. Like I just really really wish she joined for a little bit longer. It has to be one of the best endings to any arc that I've ever ever seen. Uh, for Sabote, I kind of like more of the world developing that arc brings. We get introduced to like the worst generation pirates that are also kind of traveling the Grand Line the same time that we are. Uh, we kind of get like a insight into the world with the Celestial Dragons. Uh, we get introduced to more of the, the Marines and we get kind of like the bad parts going on with like the literal racism, like especially towards like the Fishmen and the whole like idea of this like slavery thing. Also, Luffy punching Charlos, definitely one of the most satisfying moments in like all of like anime manga i think personally at least from what i've seen so far marine four i think is really obvious why i like that so i'm not going to get too much into that one but come on that just entire arc is just like insane and with wano i don't want to fully judge it yet mostly because it's not over yet but the final act has just been insane this this whole fight everybody coming together to kind of take down just a common enemy has been really really cool and i just love all the twists and turns it's kind of like brought upon for us and i just really cannot wait to see how this arc ends. I think it's gonna be amazing. But then, of course, you have Ennis Lobby and Water 7. So much cool stuff happens in these arcs, and I know we've already talked about Robin, like the role that she plays in this arc, and both these arcs, and like the way her character develops in this arc, but that's only just a part of it. You have the heartbreaking stuff with the Mary, Usopp's departure, Luffy vs. Usopp is just so, so emotional. You got the shipbuilders being CP9, one of the biggest twists I think I've seen in a long time. Did not see that coming at all. Uh, Luffy getting stuck between two buildings twice. That's always one of my favorite moments in the entire series. I just always laugh when I see that happening. 
And then you have all the events leading up to Ennis Lobby, Sanji on the train, which you already talked about, and just the gang just trying to get to Ennis Lobby all coming together. And then you get to Ennis Lobby and it's just like, oh my God, this is just insane. We kind of get more introduced to the world government and the shady things that they do. Uh, we also see Luffy and his crew, like the lengths they would go to to save a friend. And Robin, they've only known for an arc at this point, And she was literally a villain two arcs beforehand. And it's just the passion that Luffy brings to his crew is just so amazing. And it just really shines. He's literally willing to just declare war on the entire government just to save one person who means a lot to him. And I just really love it in that arc. And of course, I think it all kind of climaxes up at I want to live. I just that moment gives me goosebumps every time I watch I watch it just with Robin's backstory just flashing about how she's just going to find friends one day and then you get her whole backstory involved in that and just being told that she doesn't deserve to live this entire time to finally being able to say it because she found people who really really love her and appreciate her for who she is and I definitely feel that with my friends especially more recently so I think that's also why I hold a full attachment to this part. On top of that though, we got some pretty cool fights. We got Luffy versus Luchi. Of course, that's pretty an epic fight. Uh, Zoro and Kaku. We got Sanji Nami uh, versus, uh, what's her name? Uh, the, the the lady. I'll put a picture of her somewhere up here. Uh, and then of course, we wrap it all up with the Mary's last ride and the emotional funeral that we have for this ship. And then we get post in this lobby where we get introduced to more characters. Kobe makes a return. That's really cool. Uh, we see Garp, Luffy's granddad. We learn about Luffy's father and his origins. And then we end the entire arc before Thriller Bark with a little peek of what's to come with uh, Ace finally confronting Blackbeard. And it just kind of sets up the whole next kind of like section of the show and manga just very, very well. I just love Ennis Lobby and Water 7. It is definitely my favorite arc in like all of manga so far. I can gush about it for literally hours. Right, so as you can see, I can, talk about, I can talk about One Piece for literally hours. So let's just wrap it up talking about some of my favorite moments out of the entire series. I've already talked about a few like I Want to Live, Luffy punching Charlos, and I'm not going to go into depth on other big famous scenes like Nothing Happened with Kuma, uh, the walk to Arlong Park, uh, Luffy dodging Kuma's bullets back on Sabote, uh, Whitebeard's death. So why don't we just talk about some of the moments that I kind of felt don't get discussed as much that I really liked. Uh, on the topic of Marine Ford, I think Shanks showing up to single-handedly like end the war was pretty pretty sick. Um, my favorite scene out of that whole thing is like really minor. It's when Kizaru is gonna like knock, uh, gonna like sink the ship, but Ben Beckham kind of shows up like his gun pointed behind him, and he's like, "Oh, I guess I'm gonna stop now." Like Shanks doesn't show up a lot, and I know definitely he's gonna show up a lot more towards the end. But like, it was just really cool to actually see him do something and like kind of see like why Luffy looks up to him. It got me really really hyped for Shanks, and I'm. Super excited to see where he kind of goes in the future. Uh, on a much lighter note, my favorite kind of like minor pirates are the Duval Pirates. I, I don't think that's their name, but that's what I'm going to call them. I love them so much from like their first big fight fight with like Hachi. When he when he takes his mask off and figures out that he's like Sanji. He looks like the uh, Sanji wanted poster, should I say. Uh, and then Sanji kicking and making him look all beautiful. I thought it was just like peak, just like one piece, like comedy at its finest. Uh, and I love how they became kind of like an ally to the Straw Hats, willingly defending the ship for years while they all went off and trained. And I just like when they get back to him and he's like in a full body cast. And he's just kind of like, I did it, guys. I did it. Uh, I really kind of hope he comes back. I don't know how much help he'd be, but I feel like in like this big final war, they keep kind of like referring to or They keep kind of like foreshadowing. I really hope he kind of comes back in there just love them so much all right so in terms of moments that got me really really hyped i can think about a few but the first two that kind of came to my head were when luffy figured out how to be crocodile using his blood uh my friend kind of warned me about that scene he's like when he figures how to be crocodile it's really really cool it's really really cool it's really really cool and i wa and i read it and i was like holy shit, this is really really cool <laughs> like luffy is such a badass in this scene like that whole fight in general just with the two of them i just love it so so much definitely probably one of my top fights in the entire series uh Recently, though, like another moment that got me really, really hyped was when Jinbei showed up in Wano. Just like the way the manga did with the, the ship just like sinking all of a sudden. And you're like, what's that? What's that? Everyone's like so confused. Like they're thinking it's like maybe like a sea creature. They're thinking maybe it's something else. And then it just kind of like pans up to Jinbei. And like the straws are just so hyped. Like Jinbei is such a cool character. Like I know like... We haven't seen too much of him, but like more recently now, we, now that he's kind of joined the Straw Hats we have, but like I really, really love having Jinbei on the crew. Like that moment is like one of the coolest like re-entries that I've seen like in a long time. It was just so awesome seeing it. All right, we'll end this off talking about some of my favorite like fight moments in the entire 
uh, series. I've already, talk, I already talked about Luffy and Crocodile. I think that's a really cool fight. Of course, you have Luffy versus Doming Doflamingo and Katakuri. But honestly, like, low-key, my favorite Luffy fight is when he fights Bellamy on Jaya. I don't know why, but that moment is just so, so cool for me. I always show my friends that scene. It's just really epic. Um, I think it just kind of shows Luffy's character. Uh, Bellamy kind of comes around, messes with the Savage Kings, who are like Luffy's new friends, and Luffy's like, uh-uh-uh-uh, we're not doing that. And like, he almost risks missing going to Skypiea to like, settle this fight and like Bellamy's just so like snarky like how Luffy didn't fight him in the beginning so he thinks he's just like a pushover and then just one like punch down and he's just out for the count that moment is just so cool I don't know if you even consider that a fight but that's probably that's definitely my favorite Luffy fight in the entire series and then another fight that I really liked that kind of like I don't think gets talked about a lot um at the end of Punk Hazard with Frankie versus Baby 5 like I thought that was a really cool fight too and like obviously Frankie winning I'm like oh yes let's go because Frankie doesn't have like a lot of cool like fight moments like he got some in Dressrosa he had some in Wano but like that moment I was like wow Frankie finally got like his big 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 moment like this is really really cool I love that fight a lot he kind of turns into that like mechanized like kind of like cannon thing he like turns into it was really cool like how he was just there to defend the ship because no one else was around and they thought they had a sneak attack love that fight a lot too I feel like it's a really really underrated fight uh Definitely want to watch that fight actually in the anime, but maybe I'll do that one day. Right, so I think I got everything that I want to talk about One Piece out in this video. Uh, obviously, I didn't. <laughs> obviously, there's like a lot more that's just not in my head right now. Um, I'll say for the future, I'm just really excited to see where it goes. Right now, I'm on chapter 1044. It just came out. I read that. So 1045 will be out towards the end of this week, and I'm just really, really hyped to kind of finally wrap up Wano, uh, see where like how this whole series ends, and kind of go to the next island, which I imagine is Elpath, where Shanks probably has a big role to play. And I'm just really, really excited to see kind of finally how it ends. I know we're still like at least 200 chapters out, but like I'm ready for it. Uh, of course, I'm always down to talk about One Piece. So if you have any One Piece hot takes, if you want to talk about anything else in One Piece, maybe something that I missed, maybe a character you liked, uh, leave it in the comments below. I will try my best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And other than that, thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate you being here and hopefully I'll see you all on the next occasion. Have a great day.